What's going on everyone? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we're going to talk about the top 13 tools you need to have as an apprentice electrician. So what do I mean by hand tools? Uh, when I say hand tools, I mean like non-test equipment, non-specialized uh, like tools, really things that you're going to have in a tool pouch um, or in your bag that are things that you're using uh, in your hands, you know, like cutting tools, grabbing tools, pliers, uh, screwdrivers, things like that, things that you're going to kind of just keep on your body all the time or keep close by that you're going to be using to do your job on a pretty consistent basis. So numero uno on my list is the lineman's pliers. Um, I think that regardless of the brand, a lot of guys out there just call this tool Kleins, uh, depending on what part of the country you're on. These are two different models of them. So I like this style because they're high leverage. It just means that they are longer and you can really torque down and cut stuff with them or grab on. Um, this is another Klein version, but it's like a multi-tool. So as you can see on the inside, there's uh, a stripping tool. Um, they're kind of shaped a little bit sharper, but they also do, you know, cutting like you would normally use. You can use this for crimping if you've got to uh, um, crimp ends on the end of a wire. And then they've got a threading tool or a bolt cutter on the inside. So it's several different uses, whereas this is just one tool. Um, doesn't really matter which way that you go, but I think that it would probably be best if you started with these because they're basic and it gets you used to how to use them. And then as you go on, maybe pick up something like this that's a little bit more advanced. I'm a huge fan of having multiple use tools because that's just less tools you have to carry with you all the time. Um, you know, this is like three different tools in one. Uh, where this, you'd have to have three different tools in your pouch. So uh, lineman's clayers, you're, you're going to use these a lot for twisting wires together, for prying things out of things, um, for leverage, for cutting like bolts, uh, cutting wires, a lot of different uses that you'd have. Some people will pull wire with these. Um, you know, if you have a fish tape and you're trying to get extra leverage, they'll wrap this on the fish tape and pull on it. I think that's a bad idea, but I've done it. So the lineman's pliers. Next on the list is the needle nose pliers. There's a ton of different vari variations of these out there. I really like these Kleins because they're just rugged as hell. They can go through a lot. There's a little hole in the center um, that you can use as a stripper. Um, Klein actually does make another variation of this tool that's got several different options for stripping. I like that. Um, I just, I tend to like this one more. But needle nose, you're gonna use these all the time. When you're trying to get into tight spaces and panels, and you're trying to feed a wire into something. Um, if you're putting wire on plugs and you need to kind of just crimp down on a piece of wire, like you use these things so incredibly often. They're really, really useful. So I would just get a very strong, durable set, not like a skinny, tiny precision set that you're gonna break the tips off. Um, I've never broken the tip off of a pair of Klein brand needle nose before. So you will use this tool often, the needle nose. Next tool I think every apprentice needs to get is a set of diagonal cutters. Some people call these dikes, um, but they're diagonal cutting pliers. They're uh, essentially, you can get into places, you can grip on something and kind of pry out. You can use these to cut wire with. Um, there's a bunch of different uses that you'd have, but these are like super handy. I mean, all of these tools you can cut with, but sometimes you can't get this, uh, you know, this, this nose is, in the way when you need to cut something or you know the nose of this tool is in the way and you need to just be able to barely get the tip in to cut something or to pry with it so this is like only a cutting surface there's no uh, grip on the end for you to ply onto something pliers um, these are just cutters so you will use the shit out of these and a lot of guys uh, will tend to have a hole in the middle of them after a little while because they cut wires that were hot and they blew them up so uh, number three the diagonal cutting pliers. Number four is strippers. So there is a lot of different strippers out in the market. Um, they, some of them are like several functions. Some of them are just different size holes, different wire gauges that you can strip. 
Um, some of them are just uniquely shaped handles like these Crocs. Uh, this is from Racketeers. What I like about this is that it goes all the way up to number eight. So that's pretty huge when you take into account the difference between the holes that these two provide. These have a lot longer handle and they do more things. Um, so you can crimp several different styles of crimp on connections. There's tons of different bolt patterns. There's like 832 and 1024, a bunch of different types of bolts and threads that you can cut with this. And of course they've got uh, six different sizes of holes that you can strip with it. So it's a, a really solid tool to have, but sometimes it's nice just to have something that's more compact. I tend to just carry this in my bag all the time. It's like 10, 11 bucks from Home Depot. Um, it does sizes, what is that, 10 to 18, whereas this does 10 to 22. Um, this thing does 8 to 22, so you can see it's just kind of like what environments do you work in the most? Um, what are you going to come across with, or come across the most? What I really like about these Crocs, and I've only recently got to use them and start using them, is that they, they have this small compact size of these tiny clines, um, but the versatility in the, um, the, the different sizes of holes that you have to use, it goes all the way from number 8, which is a pretty big size wire. Um, for a pair of small strippers to have. And it goes all the way up to 22, which is the smallest that this one has. So it's a huge range. Um, I also love that it has bolt cutters on it. So you have number six and number eight. They're 832, 632. Those are the most common screws that you're gonna come across um, as an electrician. So just all around, very versatile. And I like that the grip kind of like grips your hand so you get a little bit more leverage on it. Whereas these are just straight. They kind of fall out of your hand and slide a lot. These things kind of are, a little bit more ergonomic to your hand. So regardless, you're probably best buying a couple of set of strippers, just some different ones. The reason I keep this thing on me at all times is because I can cut so many different bolts. None of these can do that. This has two different bolts you can cut. This one doesn't cut one at all. Um, it's pretty flimsy. So I think if you tried cutting bolts with it, it would just break easily. Um, whereas this one cuts multiple different ones. You can also strip with it and you can crimp a whole bunch of different crimp on connections. This one you can't crimp at all. But honestly, the amount of times that you're gonna be crimping things is gonna be pretty small compared to just stripping wire with it. Um, bolt cutting, you'll probably, will be your second use or your second need from that. But if you pay attention to the tools that you're buying, a lot of different tools now are starting to come with bolt cutters. So you may not even need to get one of these that is just bolt cutting if you have it in a different tool. But I like having a couple of different styles so I can use one, figure out if I like it. Strippers are not usually that uh, expensive. <laughs> not in the tool world at least. <laughs> um, so strippers. Next up is a plethora of channel locks. Now, again, as an apprentice, you're kind of getting into this stuff. You don't need all of these different types. But what I like is having three different sizes of channel locks. So typically, I will use on the average basis the 11 inch. Um, I like this style. There's all kinds of different ones where you have to push a button and there's all kinds of itty bitty tiny teeth in there. They end up breaking and just not working very well. But this style of channel locks is just very reliable. Uh, 11 inch is probably, if you had to pick one size to get, the 11 inch is good because uh, it'll allow you to get up to, I don't know, that's about two inches. So a lot of the conduit that you're doing, anything up from half inch to two inch, these guys will handle it. Two inch, you might struggle a little bit and be trying to like open these things up to use them. Most people don't realize with channel locks you always want to open them up so that you get the handles close together when you're using them um, but these are pretty versatile you can do little stuff and big stuff with it i like to have a, a nine inch um, set as well it's really tiny you can see these are just used to shit i don't ever use these in an environment with live wires uh, but it's nice to have a small one that you can get into smaller areas with and then lastly um, this is the 14 inch you can see like that you could probably work on three inch maybe even four inch. Yeah, you could do four inch conduit with that. Um, it's just hard because you'd be kind of stretching yourself thin with four inch. They do make larger channel locks as well that you could work up to six inch conduit on and that thing like opens like, you know, way down here. So I think it's cool if you can afford to um, just get multiple different sizes. Always recommend getting two of each size because a lot of the times you're working with both hands when you're tightening up a coupling or something like that. You've got one hand on one side, one hand on the other, and you're torquing the two together. You do that a lot in this trade. So getting two channel locks of the same size, if you can only afford one, again, get the 11 inches, um, but that is channel locks. Next on my list is having a, a variation of screwdrivers. 
So um, I should probably do these each as their own bullet point, but what I think that people should get, um, really if you, if you narrowed it down to three, is you need a high leverage screwdriver. This is probably like a, a 3 8 flathead screwdriver. This thing is really good for prying. It's also good for um, really torquing down on, on terminations when you're installing plugs or switches or something. A wider flathead will let you get more torque on that screw and allow you to get it a lot tighter. Um, these things are just beasts. It's really nice to have something that's strong and durable too when you're, when you're prying on things. Some guys will use these to chip stone. I think that's a terrible idea. Um, you can actually get like mason chisels for that. So I wouldn't do that. You end up beating these up. You end up dulling the ends on them. Um, so it's just a tool that you want to take care of. But having a high leverage screwdriver, um, you want to have a square tip screwdriver or a Robbie or a Robertson, whatever part of the country you're from. Um, but these you're going to use, this is a number two, you're going to use the crap out of these. There's all kinds of different screws that we deal with in our trade that have the square tip on them. Um, there's in panels, there's, you know, like terminals when you're, when you're bolting in a breaker into a panel, um, when you're just tightening or loosening a terminal where a wire goes in at a panel, you'll use the hell out of these squares. So get a number two. Sometimes people like to have a number one too, because you kind of come across some weird stuff every once in a while. But I personally just don't ever carry a number one around. I hardly ever need it. And I find that when I'm tightening a number one square, normally they have a slotted uh, hole in there as well so I can just use a screwdriver and I feel I get more torque out of a flathead than I do out of a number one square so our number one Robbie um, but those are two in the screwdriver family that I think you should have and the other one these are two different models essentially of the same thing um, but these are multi tools so they're several tools in one my favorite is this extended shaft um, six in one so when you take it out you've got two different Phillips, you've got a number one and a number two. So the number one's a lot more skinny, gets in tighter spaces. Number two is a little bit fatter, it's a higher leverage. And then on the inside, that's actually a 5 16th nut driver, which you use the shit out of as an electrician, 5 16th specifically. The other side, I just broke mine off the other day, and I find that this brand with Klein, for some reason, these flatheads break so often. And you can't ever just get this one piece, so you end up having to go spend another 10, 15 bucks just to get a whole new tool because the flathead breaks. I still like them. Even though they break, I still, I'll probably go like eight months to a year before one of these things breaks. Um, so just know that. But you get a quarter inch flathead and a 5 16 flathead. Um, I'm sorry, that's wrong you get a quarter inch and a 3 16 flathead. So you'll use those a lot. Um, and then the inside of where that goes is a quarter inch nut driver, which is another size that you're gonna use the shit out of. So it's six tools in one. Um, and I like this style because these things don't just fall out, like they actually stay put. Um, so out of your screwdriver family, I think that's really all you needed. If you could only pick a couple, I would say just get this multi-tool because it gets you your flathead, your Phillips, and a couple of nut drivers, and then it gets you uh, a, a huge screwdriver if you were only to pick these two. But you can't really do that. You need to get one of these, these squares. Um, you can get by without having it. Most screws that have a square hole in them, in, in our trade, in the type of screws and bolts we deal with, also have a flathead slot in the center of them. So you can use either, or you could get by with not having one of these for a little while. Um, but it's just more efficient, more fast, and um, easier to use than a flathead in a lot of situations. So I would just probably narrow it down to these three if I were gonna buy, you don't have to have two different multi-tools unless you just wanna have an extra one in case a buddy of yours doesn't bring one for the day. So, screwdrivers. Next on the list is kind of in the same vein. Um, these are precision screwdrivers or terminating screwdrivers uh, depending on who you work with and what they call them. But I would recommend getting a couple of different size flathead and a couple of different size uh, Phillips. Um, what I like, most of these have some sort of end on them that is fixed in your fingers and it allows you to twist the whole tool like these. So this back spins and it's just nice to be able to grab onto that and spin the whole screwdriver. Um, you don't necessarily need that, but I like that style. Klein, these are all Klein brands, so they're really good. They come with different lengths of shafts. They come with different size tips on them, but you're going to work in environments where you're going to need really tiny stuff. Um, in a lot of different places and a lot of different environments you're going to need that. So I would get a good set of these where there's like five or six in one full kit so you have all the different sizes. 
Next up is the sheetrock saw or the keyhole saw, sheetrock knife. I've heard it called so many different things. It's really a keyhole saw. Um, it's what most construction people call it, but it's for cutting sheetrock. So it's like a little saw, um, decent like rigidity to it. I like this Stanley the, more, the most out of any other keyhole saw that I've used. Um, there's a lot of keyhole saws that this one you can tell is rather thick. I mean, it's like really hard to bend. So if you're jabbing, a lot of people call them jab saws too, but when you're, when you're jabbing into a wall, you want something that's really rigid that's not gonna bend on you. Some of these keyhole saws that you see out there are like super flimsy and they've got thin metal and so they end up bending over time or breaking um, and then you're trying to like jam through like double thick sheetrock and they just won't go and you're sitting there hammered on it and the, the blade's bowing. I like one that's really stout and rigid. I find that it helps me get more precise with my cuts as well. Um, so sheetrock saw, jab saw, keyhole saw, sheetrock knife, whatever the hell you want to call it. All right, so next on the list of things that you need to buy as an apprentice is a good tape measure. And I say a good tape measure because there's a lot of shit tape measures out there that you may want to like buy just because they're cheap. But you're going to use a certain type of tape measure in this industry. Um, and I recommend that you get something that is fat. So some tape measures have... Oops, something's locked. Um, some of them have like a skinnier tape, even skinnier than that. Um, this Fat Max, it's 25 feet long and it has a break of like, I don't know, 14 feet. So like if I backed out, I can extend this thing like really, really far and it doesn't break. It doesn't just fall over. Whereas a lot of like weaker tape measures will fall over. Um, this Klein is kind of one of them. Like you can tell it's just like a floppier tape. Um, but this thing, you can tell it's not. Like it's a little bit stout. There's actually... Uh, there's like a little bit of resistance in it, whereas this thing is just like really super flimsy. So I don't like flimsy tape measures. Um, I do like that this is magnetic, this Klein, so you can actually stick it against something metal and it sticks against it. Um, that way when you're measuring stuff over your head, it doesn't fall down if you're working in like a commercial environment or industrial where you're working a lot of, around a lot of metal. But I kind of find that the magnetic thing is a little bit more annoying than anything. So I personally don't, I don't use magnetic tapes very often. Um, I do like on the bottom of the Klein that the button, the, the locking mechanism, you just hold so your finger's not in the way and you slam your finger. Whereas this Fat Max, if you let this thing retract, boom, you smack your finger. Not a huge deal, um, but sometimes this thing will come ripping in on you and you smash your finger on it. Um, but I do like the size. Like this thing's probably the smallest out of all of these and it fits in, in my hand really well. I just like the ergonomics of it. Um, the Klein, the benefit of this is it has the measurements on the front and the back. That's pretty cool. I really, really like it. Um, I also like that on this Klein, it has a, uh, a little piece of metal on the top and the bottom of the tape. So I can hook this thing, you know, if I'm trying to measure something, I can hook it on the bottom or if I'm measuring from the top, I can hook it on the top and pull out a measurement. Um, so that does have a plus on it. Um, the stud is really cool as well. I find that this is the biggest one and I don't like how big it is. I do like this little clasp on it. I think it's got the best clasp because these tend to like the screw falls out and then you lose the clip on them. Um, same thing with this climb. But uh, the stud is really good. The, it's made out of almost like a nylon or like a fabric. So this thing won't tear on you where a lot of these other tapes, if you catch them on something, this thing will just rip right in half and then you're out a tape measure so these things the studs you can actually drop them from 80 feet they won't break um, i've actually taken these and just threw them as hard as i could on the ground and they still work just fine um, so i do like that about them but i think they're a little weak in the front end they don't have any sort of like extra um, material to grab on if you look at the tips of both of these guys um, the ears stick out a little bit more so it's easier to grasp this thing onto things uh, this thing, not so much. It's like a little bit skinnier. Um, so th that's just a, a preference thing. This stud also has like a little hole so that you can you can hold on to it and release from the bottom and your finger's not in the way again. Another kind of cool feature. But still, all in all, you're going to see this stud used most in the construction trade and in all of the trades, almost more than any other uh, tape measure that you're going to find. People just love these. They're reliable. They're super fat. They're stout. They're ergonomically great to have in your hand. The only problem that I hate about them is the screw. Every one of them I've ever had, the screw falls out. 
um, and this thing just goes missing and then you can't latch it on anymore. And for me, I'll just throw that in my garage and not use it anymore, but then I'll go buy another one because they're really badass. So get a good tape measure. Next on your list of things to have as an apprentice are a good set of flashlights. I would get a couple different types of flashlights. Um, this one, I like that it's magnetic, so you can stick it to something. Well, that's not a magnet. Um, like that. This thing will will uh, stick to a purlin or to any steel if you're up in a, a lift and you need some light, you can just smack this on the ceiling and it stays right there. You can turn it on, really bright. It's made by Nebo. Uh, I find that Nebo actually makes a lot of lights. This one's made by Nebo as well. Um, this one's not magnetic. This is just a really good flashlight to have on you. It's super bright. Um, there's a whole bunch of different lumen outputs that you can get with these. I would just say the higher the lumens you can, or that you can get, get them, you're just gonna run through batteries a little bit you know, faster, um, which is also another problem with flashlights. You're gonna find yourself charging batteries or replacing batteries all the time. Most flashlights that you're gonna get will have one of two different types of battery set up. Some of them actually have like double AA, A, triple A batteries that you have to stick inside. And then once you kill your battery, you gotta throw them out, get new batteries. I actually like that more than having something that I can charge on a USB. It's just a personal preference. Um, I find that just the ones that have the USB chargers, for some reason, they don't last as long. Uh, maybe that's just the styles that I've been getting, but I like that I can stick actual batteries in these things. It seems to make them last longer um, than whatever batteries they're using for these little charging deals that they have inside. Um, so I recommend having like a hand powered or a handheld like high powered flashlight. Um, something a little bit smaller, more compact, that's magnetic, that you can stick up in the ceiling with you. And then also a good hard hat uh, headlamp. So this is made by Milwaukee. There's Milwaukee makes a bunch of different brands. Tons of people make these. Uh, most of them are shit, just being honest. Most of them, the batteries die way too quick. You forget that they're on and you're in daylight, so you end up burning the batteries out in these things, but you'll use them because as electricians, we work when the power's off a lot. So we're working in dark rooms all the time. So having a good uh, headlamp is a really, really good thing to have. This one actually does charge with USB, which is okay. Um, I, don't, I don't really care either way. I just find that for some reason, when I stick actual like three AA batteries will last for quite a lot longer and you'll get brighter light out of it than you will with some of these smaller uh, headlamps. So um, get yourself a, a few different kinds of headlights. I actually like, I'm kind of addicted to buying flashlights. So I've got all kinds of damn flashlights. I just always, I'm trying to find like the one that's really good. And I find that most of them have like a little bit of a flaw to them and I'm kind of half happy uh, with every flashlight. But Nebos, um, they make the best so far that I've come across that are just handheld kind of flashlights. And I like the style of Milwaukee's headlamps more than I've liked anybody else's. So I would go ahead and get some good flashlights. Next up on the list are hammers. You don't have to have multiple. If you get one hammer, you're good. Um, some people like their apprentices to have a smooth face on this uh, hammering surface because when you're hammering like staples into a wire, if you're doing residential or something like that, um, the little cleats inside of here can tear through that insulation and you end up damaging the wire. So getting a smooth one is just fine. I personally like to have one that has cleats on the end because it just grips more when you're hitting something. Um, so. It, it slips off of the surface less than a smooth surface would. Um, this one's kind of cool. You can stick a nail in there and uh, it's got like a little slot for a nail. So you stick a nail in there, there's a magnet. It'll actually stick on this thing and you can hammer that nail in that way. And then the nails in the material. So when you back off, the nail's still there and you can keep hammering kind of a hokey thing. You don't really need that. Um, this is my favorite hammer. It's the hammer that I've been using for over a decade now. It's, a, it's an S-Wing 22 ounce hammer. Another thing to consider when you're looking at hammers is they've got like 16 ounce, 18 ounce, 20, 22, 24, 26. There's all kinds of different size hammers. I just personally find with my size and my build that a 22 ounce is perfect. It gives me enough leverage so I can really hammer down on stuff. It's not too small that I have to put a lot of myself into it and it's long. So I just like the balance of how a 22 ounce hammer works. Um, both of these I think are great. I like that the DeWalt is a little bit more flat on its uh, claw. Whereas this thing is a little bit more like has a bow to it. I just find that I can get 
under stuff easier or I can like tear into something easier. It's just more accurate um, when it's a little bit straighter. So I just like the style of that and I like the ergonomics of this better. This is a DeWalt uh, 22 ounce. The DWHT51064. But these things are like good old boys, reliable, all the older electricians, um, guys that have been doing this a long time, you'll most of the time you're gonna see them with this hammer. Get yourself a really good hammer. Don't bring mom's hammer to the fucking job site. Don't bring a ball peen hammer. Go get yourself a good damn hammer. Next tool that I think every apprentice should get um, is the roto splitter. Now, if you don't do commercial or you're not in an industrial environment, if all you do is residential, you're not gonna need these. You may come across some environments where somebody wants to wire a house in MC cable, which is pretty damn rare. Um, but most of the time a resident, a residential electrician is not going to need one of these. What this is, is you put a MC cable inside of this thing and it's got a cutting surface on the inside, this little cutting wheel. Uh, it scores the metal armor around the cable um, and allows you to peel it off. You can use the hell out of these. Um, some guys will like to like bend the cable over and cut it. I don't recommend anybody does that. They actually have a tool to properly use with the MC cable and I think that you need to get a roto splitter. These things really aren't that expensive. I'm like 30 bucks, I think you can get a pretty decent one. A couple of different brands out there like Klein makes them, Greenlee makes them. Um, I think even Ideal makes them. I like this uh, C-Tech brand. It's actually a, a really good brand. There's no like extra extraneous like weird shit about it. I find that the teeth cut often and accurate when I need them to. Um, the, bl the blades don't break as much. The handle doesn't just like come off, fall off all the time. Plus there's a little holder on the inside of it where you can put an extra blade in. So that's just my preference, um, but get a roto splitter. The last hand tool that I think every apprentice needs to have is a knife and maybe a couple different knives. I personally like to have a uh, utility knife that I can change the blades out. I like the retractable style just cause it's more compact. It goes in your tools, it's out of the way. Um, you can whip it out, keep a sharp blade on it all the time, get yourself like a whole thing of like a hundred different blades. Um, but I like this style of utility knife. There's all kinds of different styles. Some people like the fixed where it doesn't retract in. It's just a blade like that that you can stick away. Totally fine. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't wanna like blindly stick my hand in something and then stab myself with a knife. So I like to keep the retractable type. Um, this is more for doing stuff on a job like if you're trying to score uh, Romex or, or uh, um, I don't know, there's a lot of different uses that you would use these for, but um, I like to keep this one in my tool pouch because this is the knife that I use most often for actually cutting things. Whereas I have a pocket knife that I keep with me everywhere. I'm a country boy. I've just always been that way. I keep a knife in my damn pocket everywhere I go and I'm always freaked out at the fucking airport when I go thinking like, shit, did I leave my knife in my pocket? But I always keep like a full size knife, not like a tiny little one. Um, it's nice to have a knife that's like sturdy and reliable. This is from Gerber. Gerber makes good knives. Buck also makes really good knives, Buck knives. Um, Buck, I think, has a lifetime guarantee. So if you buy a knife from them and then you break the blade on it, you just send it back to them. They send you a brand new uh, knife like for life and if you give the knife to somebody else that warranty goes with them as well so um, i like to just keep a knife on me there's a lot of times where you're gonna need to like pry into something so having a knife that's like strong durable you don't care about beating the shit out of it um, in your pocket is good sometimes you'll have stuff that you need to cut that like a knife like this is just is too small and you're gonna break the blade on it because these are pretty feeble little blades but you want something that's like super thick. I like serrated style. I like the blade that has like a straight edge on it. Sometimes I'm in a place and I don't have a damn flathead screwdriver and I can just use the end of this to kind of open something up. Um, but just having a good quality, you know, 40, 50, $60 pocket knife that you can beat the shit out of, um, use it to pry, use it to cut, whatever is another really good thing to keep on you all the time. Just as a man in general, or a woman, or a woman. Been getting comments about that lady lately. Women too. Have a knife on you. Or if some dude comes up to you in the parking lot, you die. No, just kidding, ladies. <laughs> Don't fucking do that. I didn't say kill anybody. Um, just keep some knives on you. And I think keeping a couple of different ones is a good idea as well. Keep one in your truck, one in your pouch, one in your pocket. <laughs> keep a sword on your back. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That's my whole list. Um, those are the 13 tools that I think every apprentice should have. You don't have to have every single one of the ones that I showed you. I have like seven of everything because I've been doing this so long and I've had a, 
helpers and it's like it's nice to have a set of tools that's extra just because you're always going to have that one helper that seems to forget his fucking tools all the time or that like left your shit out in his the back of his truck and it got rained on or some dumb shit like that so having some spare tools is a really good thing to have so let me know if you guys think there's anything i missed uh any brands or anything that you guys prefer um thank you so much for everything i love you guys and i will see you in the next episode